Welcome to the short presentation on the clinical case report where I've used ProTlider, the new single rotary PAR file instrument in combination with ProTaper Next. The patient, a 20 year old female, presented with a long standing abscess on her lower left first molar. It was decided to do emergency root canal treatment and to place calcium hydroxide as an intracanal medicament. Note on this periapical radiograph that we only located three root canal systems, but towards the end of the emergency root canal procedure, a second distal root canal was located. AH temp was our calcium hydroxide material of choice. This is a smooth alkaline calcium hydroxide paste in a syringe. It's got a pH of approximately 12, and it's important to note that this product demonstrates reduced desiccation. That means less blocking of cannulas and syringes when you use the material and also less waste of the material in the long run. Very, very cost effective. I want to draw your attention to the specialized application tip of this material. It is 25 millimeters long, flexible and at an angulation of about 45 degrees to allow easier placement. The external diameter is 0.41 millimeters, ensuring that you can place this application tip very deep into the root canal system, allowing for direct and precise application of the calcium hydroxide material. On this video clip, you can see how flexible the application tip is. You can move the stopper up and down to gauge the depth that you're going to place the material. After you attach it to the AHTEM syringe, it can very easily be placed into the canal and the calcium hydroxide material syringe into the root canal systems. You can see the material is very smooth. And the last unique characteristic that I want to mention is the fact that the material is very radio opaque to allow detection radiographically. The calcium hydroxide was left for approximately two weeks inside the tooth before we brought the patient back for a second visit. The Propix Pixie is one of the indispensable products in my practice. We used it in this clinical case to determine working length of the four different root canal systems before we confirmed it radiographically, as you can see on this periapical radiograph. So after lengthy termination, it was time for the most important step of this entire root canal system to create a reproducible glide path. We used a size 10k file in short amplitudes in each root canal, making it loose so that the file can travel about 4 to 5 millimeters towards working length without any obstruction. To verify the glide path, the size 10k file was pulled out of the root canal system about 4 to 5 millimeters, and then we ensured that with light finger pressure, we could push the file back to working length without any obstruction. So now we have reached the stage in this clinical case report to enlarge the glide path. For many years, we have used path files to enlarge the glide path to reduce the torsional stress on our first rotary instrument and also to allow the instrument to move in and out of the canal to reduce bending stress. But recently, Densply Mylofer has launched the ProGlider instrument. So clinicians can now choose between PAR files or the ProGlider instrument to enlarge the glide path. So let's do a direct comparison between PAR files and the ProGlider instrument. PAR files, you have to use three different instruments compared to a single file with the ProGlider system. PAR files has got a constant taper of 2% along the cutting fluids of the instruments compared to the ProGlider that demonstrate variable progressive taper of up to 8.5%. PAR files is made out of conventional nickel titanium alloy compared to the ProGlider instrument that is manufactured from M-wire nitile alloy. So come on, by now you should know that M-wire gives us more flexibility and allow us to treat more challenging and complex cases and it also gives us a slight bit more resistance against cyclic fatigue. So, we only need one pro glider to enlarge the glide path. It's suitable for most root canals and 
you'll be surprising to see how it respects the original canal anatomy. So allow me to draw your attention to some of the characteristics of the ProGlider instrument. We know that the tip is a size 16 ISO and the taper starts at 2% for approximately the first 3 millimeters. That is followed by a taper of 3% for 4 millimeters of the cutting flutes, then 5% taper for the following 4 millimeters, and lastly the last 7 millimeters of the 18 millimeter of cutting flutes is a 8% taper. The ProGlider instrument is also available in a length of 21, 25 or 31. It's using continuous rotation of 300 rpm and a torque of 2 to 4 or even a maximum of 5.6 depending on what motor you are using in your practice. The ProGlider instrument is allowed to run down the previously created reproducible glide path if resistance is met, a brushing motion is employed until the file can reach full working length and enlarging the reproducible glide path to the size of the ProGlider instrument. So listen, let me share with you probably the most important benefit of the ProGlider instrument in your practice. We all know that time is a very important factor in every clinical procedure. So what I've done I've compared the mean preparation time to create a reproducible glide path and to enlarge it using hand instruments, path files and a pro glider instrument. So the study was done on simulated plastic canals and this slide demonstrates the results of my investigation. Hand files had a mean preparation time of about 24 seconds followed by path files, the three instruments of 17 seconds, the ProGlider came in at a record time of only 11 seconds to create a reproducible glide path with a size 10 file and to enlarge the glide path with the ProGlider instrument. It's important to note that time to change the instruments was not even taken into account. I think you would agree that with path files, because we are changing between three different instruments compared to the ProGlider where we have a single instrument, if this was taken into account, it would have drastically increased the preparation time for a glide path with path files compared to the pro glider instrument. So let's move on to canal preparation using the pro taper next system. The first instrument is the pro taper next X1. This is the main shaping instrument. It's got a tip of 1704. And the glide path that was created by the ProGlider will allow this instrument to glide and cut its way down to working length. Note that in this clinical case the file nearly reached working length. So we are going to use a backstroke brushing motion to create a little bit more coronal space to allow the X1 instrument to go into the deeper portion of the root canal system. Once we reach full working length we can employ the touch and brush sequence where we touch the apex and brush the wall outwards. This sequence is repeated three to four times with the X1. Once canal preparation is completed with the X1, the canal is irrigated, recapitulated with a patency file and re-irrigated to remove debris. It is now time for our first finishing instrument, ProTaper Next X2. It's got a tip of 2506 this file is also used in a brushing sequence to create more coronal space allowing the instrument to progress to the apical part of the root canal system. Once the apex is reached we will employ the touch and brush sequence but only two to three times with this instrument because of its larger size. Root canal irrigation was done with the Endovac system. We used EDTA 17% and 3.5% heated sodium hypochlorite to clean the canal systems. The endovac uses negative pressure by first using the macro cannula followed by the micro cannula to ensure irrigation flow right up to the apical 2 mm of each root canal system. After root canal preparation with the ProTaper Next X2, a size 25 night eye hand file was used to gauge the apical foramen size of each root canal system. 
it was found that the file fit snug at length in all four root canals and this confirmed canal preparation. The final step would be to obturate the root canal systems. It was decided to obturate the mesial root canal systems with gutta core and the distal root canal systems with calamus dual. On this periapical radiograph you can clearly see the fit of two X2 gutta core verifiers in the mesial root canal systems and two protopernic size 25 gutta percha cones in the distal root canal system. The X2 gutta core carriers consisting of cross link gutta percha pores covered with gutta percha was heated in a thermo prep plus oven for the recommended time before the carrier was removed and inserted into a root canal system that was lightly coated with AH plus cement. Obturation of the second mesial root canal system also with gutta core. So let's look at the final result of the obturation. It is evident from this post-operative radiograph that ProTlider and ProTaper Next maintain the original canal anatomy. A three-month post-operative radiograph demonstrates some periapical healing as well as some intra-radicular bone healing. So I think we should end off by summarizing the advantages of the ProTlider single file rotary instrument for glide path enlargement. The name says it all. A single instrument to enlarge the glide path instead of using three path file instruments as we've done previously. This will also ensure that you save a lot of clinical time during your procedures. Lastly, we have to remember that this ProTlider instrument is made from M-Wire. M-Wire gives us flexibility, resistance to cyclic fatigue and allowing you the clinician to treat more complex cases. I want to thank you for your time to listen to the short presentation and summarizing the advantages of the new ProTlider instrument.